Before we begin this trivia game, now would be a good time to practice the phrase, Ah, oh, man, I knew that. Welcome back to the next sound effects star. Up next is Randall Smith, a contestant who has a powerful story about redemption. My name is Randall Smith, and when I was four years old, my dad got killed by a cartoon character wielding a giant mallet. I was in the other room at the time and heard everything. From that point on, I decided to dedicate my life to turning sound effects into a positive force. And here to present a piece he calls an alpaca making love to a fax machine is Randall Smith. This is for you, Dad. <laughs> Judges, what do you think? I love what you're about, man, but I didn't quite feel that. The fax machine sounded more like a printer to me. Oh, okay, thank you. Randall, I love how inspiring your story is, but I have to agree. That sounded more like an alpaca having sex with a printer more than it did an alpaca making love to a fax machine. I'm out. I disagree, but thanks. These guys don't know what they're talking about. That really worked for me. You really took me there. It felt like I was actually watching an alpaca going to town on a fax machine. I'm in. Congrats, Randall. We'll see you next week. Now, here performing a piece she calls a wolfman farting in a bathtub is Alice Berry. Binge Pipe is still contractually bound to bring you You Don't Know Jack. Binge Pipe. Apparently, our IPO wasn't legal. I'm Cookie Masterson. Thank you for inviting me to hang out with you. Wait, that's what this is, right? Eight players, yeah. I've definitely been to a party with eight people before, but why are you even asking? I mean, come on. And welcome to all of you in the audience who couldn't be bothered to buy the game. I'm adding an audience bonus just for you. The more audience members pick the right answer, the less bonus money goes to the players. But if the audience really tanks it, that right answer is gonna be worth big bucks. So let's dive in. Time for question one. First, for the true 90s kids, what's a sure sign that you were a 90s kid? An 1890s kid, that is. You blew your allowance on O. Henry bars. Your first Christmas gift was a package of milk duds. You were the first kid on your block with bit of honey, or you begged your parents for candy corn. What'd you pick? Oh, Henry. <coughs> Speaking of duds. <coughs> oh, Henry bars, milk duds, and bit of honey were all invented in the 1920s. Candy corn, however, was introduced in the 1880s. Therefore, it's the only candy true 1890s kids would have begged their parents for. <coughs> but now millennials are killing the bland candy industry. And how'd the audience do on that one? So, not the smartest group, then. That means that right answer is worth even more. We'll see if your luck holds out. Alleluia, alleluia. Coming up next, a nice shape. If you decided to start dating shapes, which would offer the most stable relationship? The mysterious square, the charming rhombus, the passionate circle, or the hunky triangle. Okay, let's take a look. What a pity. Because all their sides are connected, triangles are the strongest and most stable of the shapes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why they cut pizza into triangles. Because it will never, ever let you down. Why don't we do it with cream? 
Oh, here's a good one. You're a hoser, Harry. Sounds to me like some sort of dis or dat. I'm going to read you seven things, and for each, I want you to tell me if it's a curling term or a magical stone from the world of Harry Potter. Answer quick. You'll only have a few seconds to choose between a curling term or a Harry Potter stone. And you're all doing this together, so pay attention. Ready? Good. Hog stone. Stone. Philosopher's Stone. Resurrection Stone. Moving stone. A majority of you deserve my praise, but player five, you couldn't have done much worse. Dissatisfaction has been noted. Looks like it's screw time. That is the truth, Cookie. Use the screw to make answering a question harder for all the other players. The results may surprise you, and you'll receive a monetary bonus for anyone who answers incorrectly. <clears throat> Great, thanks. What a mutually satisfying solution. There is no hiding from dying to get in. The worst part about being immortal is that timeshare presentations go on forever. What would be the most common visitor review of the Hotel Transylvania if it also happened to be the most common blood type in the world? A positive, feel like I died and went to Hampton. A negative, great, but halls blocked by spooky twins. B negative, the stat. Uh-oh. <laughs> Player five has unleashed the screw. Hashtag, you're it. What'd you guys pick? I'm positive that you're wrong. <laughs> Well over one-third of the population has O-positive blood, making it the most common on the planet. Hey, good work with that screw player five. This is your cash now. Here we have... Our movie science has finally gone too far. What giant monster movie would tower just above Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom on the hierarchy of biological classifications? Godzilla, Devil's Domain, King Kong, Royal Family, Pacific Rim, First Class, or Cloverfield, Out of Order? Let's see who got it. It turns out the real monster is being wrong. <coughs> Domain is one step above kingdom on the taxonomic classification hierarchy. So radioactive dinosaur is just above regular dinosaur, but they're both below shirtless Jeff Goldblum. That's the end of round one. Numbers, numbers, show me numbers. Currently, player five is in the lead. On the other hand, 
These players are highly valued, but their scores are not. When the going gets tough, the tough gets more screws. Round two screws screw even harder, and you'll net more cash for each player that answers wrong. So don't be afraid to use them. The rest of you better answer fast if you don't want to be screwed. Oh, and did I mention all the money's doubled in round two? I am feeling joy. Six trombones is not a parade. Introducing, my favorite instrument is the laptop. Based on elevation, which EDM DJ is making the highest beat drop? Diplo dropping the beat from the... What's this? Player one just let loose a screw. Let's make you guys a bit more secure. Hope you like what you picked. The thermosphere is 50 to 440 miles above the Earth. The only higher layer of the atmosphere is the exosphere. Might want to sit this one out. I can't imagine a beat dropping from that high would end well. Nice screw job, player one. Here's that cash. The algorithm demands your input. Would you like a formal question or a question that keeps things casual? Pick an option on your device now. Here are the consequences of your choices. We graciously accept your choice. Je trouve Jerry Lewis sonnant légèrement amusant. Set. Feast your eyes upon this. A question that keeps things casual. I was just wondering, if, if you're not doing anything else, could you tell me which of these is not one of Ashton Casual Kutcher's movies? No strings attached. So watch out. My friends, player two has unleashed the screw. Binge Pipe was going to make you read this eventually. Might as well be now. Let's see how that shook out. Ryan Reynolds was the star of Just Friends. The studio thought about casting Ashton, but it just couldn't commit. Expert screwing player two. Here's your extra cash. Twas then I learned to heed the winds of air. This one's called Stuck Together Pages of Greatness. Say you visit a luxury spa that plays recordings of classic literature while you're being pampered. If you want your massage to have a happy ending, what is your best bet? Hot Stone and Wuthering Heights, Swedish with Anna Karenina, Shiatsu and The Great Gatsby, or Deep Tissue and Jane Eyre. I'm sure you meant well. <laughs> At the end of Jane Eyre, she marries her true love, Mr. Rochester. I mean, sure, that's after Rochester's first wife sets fire to his house and jumps off the roof, but this was 1847, so you, you take what you can get. Na, 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 na. Take a good look at Let Us Help You. Yeah, all right. That's uh, it's one of those. Binge Pipe recommends. Because you watched Big Hero 6 and The Sixth Sense, we thought you'd enjoy a starting basketball team, a starting volleyball team, a starting polo team, 
or a starting water polo team. So who got it? A volleyball game begins with two teams of six on either side of the net. <laughs> Let's try, my heart feels loony. Whose Fitbit is probably freaking out the most about a high resting heart rate? Porky Pigs, Dumbos, Snoopies, or Bugs Bunnies? Okay, who chose what? Oh, ouch. <coughs> Rabbits have a high resting heart rate, as high as 350 beats per minute. You should see how many steps he logs when he takes that wrong turn at Albuquerque. Ow. Welcome to the attack. When you see an answer that matches the category, tap. Well, don't mind me then. Here's your clue. M is for middle name. It's weird to see these famous people without their signature middle name. Four takes it. I gotta hand it to you, player four. You won. What are you waiting for? My validation? Get out of here. You don't know Jack. Binge Pipes menu screen offers everything you need to start a trivia game. Binge Pipe is more than a streaming service, and it's also less than a streaming service, because we're not a streaming service. <laughs> or are we? Yes, we aren't. I'm a gamer. 
I'm that guy at work who won't stop quoting Caddyshack. I'm Mark Twain, and this is Jurassic Park. We are Binge Fight! Check out this great content streaming soon to Binge Pipe. Binge Pipe, much to the chagrin of its board of directors, presents You Don't Know Jack. Binge Pipe, we'll figure out how to monetize later. Hi, I'm Cookie Masterson, and the only thing better than being cool is being kind. Eight players. Eight is my favorite number because it looks like two O's stacked up, and O is my favorite letter. And since we've got some folks in overflow seating, I'll be tacking an audience bonus onto every question. The better the audience does on a question, the less bonus money goes to the players. But if the audience really whiffs it, that right answer is going to be worth major moolah. Ready or not, here we go. To get things started, only the freshest references. Which of these 80s catchphrases best describes the story of Icarus? Wax on, wax off, where's the beef, I'll be back, or gag me with a spoon? Okay, what'd you pick? Ah, yes, the uh, classic Greek myth of Icarus, the boy who tragically gagged on a spoon. It's a timeless tale. <laughs> Icarus flew on wings made of wax and feathers until the sun melted his wings, causing him to fall to his death. Which is like grody to the max. And how'd our lovely audience do? Oh, just what I look for in an audience. Lovable stupidity. That means I'm dealing out bonus cash for that right answer. Buy yourself something nice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's time for Movie Pass Fail. What would be a good study book for a filmmaker who wants to pass the Bechdel test? Farting for dummies, goldfish for dummies, drowning for dummies, or women for dummies? Who picked what? Uh, no. In order for a film to pass the Bechdel test, it must feature at least two women having a conversation about anything other than men. Honestly, if you have to read this book, maybe just stick to making movies about farts. Why don't we do it with three? How about this one? Young Casper the Friendly G, and it's a dis or dat. I'm going to read off seven names, and for each one, tell me if it's a classic comic character published by Harvey Comics, you know, the publishers of Casper the Friendly Ghost, or a famous rapper from Atlanta. Think fast, you'll only get a few seconds to pick between a children's comics character or an Atlanta rapper. And you're all doing this together, so focus up. Okay, let's do it. Baby Huey.
Most of you earned my respect. Now let's keep going. I don't need you anymore. Next up, frat chance. If I wanted to start a fraternity with letters that more or less look like three pitchforks, what name should I use? Alpha Alpha Alpha, Ada Ada Ada, Kai Kai Kai, or Psy Psy Psy? I love this part. Wait for it. Wait for it. Psy is the 23rd letter of the Greek alphabet, and it looks either like a little pitchfork or a little trident. Psy, Psy, Psy is also what my mom said when she saw my one-man show. Here's one I like to call, you can have the remote when I'm dead. They say we're living in a golden age of television, and there's no better time to appreciate this than when a stringy-haired demon girl is going to crawl out of it and strangle you. Say you accidentally watch the cursed VHS tape from The Ring. Which show could you binge watch in the time you have left before you die? Every episode of Friends, every episode of the original Law and & Order, every episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, or every episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. What'd you guys pick? Nope, you're dead, and it's probably Wesley's fault. We're talking 895 episodes. You wouldn't even see half his collection of cardigans. The Curse in the Ring gives you one week to live, which is enough time to watch all 236 half-hour episodes of Friends. And who knows, Janice's laugh could frighten off Samara before she gets to you. Round one is officially behind us. Time to see who is actually trying. These players are currently tied for the lead. Speaking of the exact opposite of that, these players are negatively affecting our averages. We have some more screws to help our targeted numbers. And keep in mind, round two screws have crazier effects. Plus, they earn you a bigger bonus for each player that gets the question wrong. So don't be shy about using them. The rest of you better answer fast before you get screwed. Oh, and by the way, all the cash in round two is doubled, in case you care about things like that. I feel good about this. Six trombones is not a parade. Try this on for size. Remember Third Rock from the Sun? Suppose NBC rebooted Third Rock, but set it on Jupiter instead of Earth. What would be the most appropriate name for the new show? Sixth Rock from the Sun, first to guest. Well, well. <laughs> Player 4 just screwed the room. Embrace the change. Or don't. Okay, what'd you pick? Jupiter is the gas giant closest to our sun. I'll bet gas giant and our sun are phrases often spoken by French Stewart's parents. <laughs> <clears throat> Look, all the questions can't be about memes. Oh, excellent screwing player four. Spend this wisely. Oh, and it looks like we've got some name changes. I'd call that an improvement. We'd like to offer you a chance to gain some content while also losing some other content. Would you like a question about great sex or a question about great sex? Use your device to select your preference.
The votes are in. You have engaged with the process. Mes collègues sont des crétins. Sept. This one's known as a question about great sex. Sit down. I've got some real hot goss. My friend went out with a plant last night who reproduces through exposed seeds. And I was like, girl, sounds like you went out with a real gymnosperm, angiosperm. Oh, this will be good. Player eight decided to screw. Let's turn those frowns upside down. Okay, who chose what? <laughs> Gymnosperms are plants that reproduce through naked or exposed seeds. She told me once you go gymnosperm, there's a lot of cones. The seeds are often in cones, just cones everywhere. Nicely screwed play rate. Enjoy your cash. Was then I learned to heed the winds of it. Why not try Ready Flare 1? I keep hearing modern games give players the option to reskin the characters. If I do this naturally by letting my skin cells die, how long will it take me to reskin myself? About one month, about two months, about three months, or about six months. Let's see how that shook out. Wow! Oh, that was nice. <laughs> it takes about one month for new skin cells to reach the surface. <laughs> Otherwise known as the amount of time I spent playing the Zelda Water Temple. <laughs> and now, look, I didn't see it either, but I still know who's in it. Which actor from the 2017 movie Justice League is probably the most badass in real life because of their military training? The one who played Superman, the one who played Batman, the one who played Wonder Woman, or the one who played Aquaman? So what'd you pick? Superman is super wrong. Aquaman is never the right answer. <laughs> Gal Gadot served two years in the Israeli Defense Forces as a combat trainer. She would have joined the Air Force too, but she couldn't find her invisible jet. Up next, Octopus Coffee Queen Elizabeth or Frankenstein? Octopus Coffee Queen Elizabeth or Frankenstein? Monster. John Lennon's alter ego in Yellow Submarine. Octopus Coffee Queen Elizabeth or Frankenstein? picked what? In the 1968 animated film Yellow Submarine, John Lennon is introduced as Frankenstein's monster. You made it to the attack. Well, excuse me for living. Here's your clue. Centenarians only. I hope you can guess which things are over a hundred years old. Good luck.
Player one takes it. Nice work, player one. Since you barely won, here's barely a congratulations. Good job from all of us here at You Don't Know Jack! Binge Pipes menu screen. hotel was run by a mysterious family for several generations until close to In unrelated news, the trivia murder party killer is still on the loose. And up next, pants. This is your wake-up call. Prepare to die. Welcome to Trivia Murder Party! That glowing review in Real Hotels Magazine was a fake luring you here to fight for your life. Only one of you will survive. It's been all over the news. I mean, there was a whole montage about it at the beginning, so I'm surprised you didn't see this coming. All right, first question. Where is SpongeBob SquarePants employed? Use your device to answer the question. I'm talking to you too, audience. Almost out of time. And the correct answer is... Who got the question right? Way too easy. Let's try another one. What's the better known title for the painting, La Gioconda? <laughs> Time's almost up. Who picked? This. The rest of you, come with me. Welcome to room 105. Ah, the lost art of letter writing. I'm going to dictate a message to you. Write down as much of what I say as you can. The player who writes the fewest of my words will die. Okay, let me lean back in this chair and get my feet up. And we begin. Dear guests, many of you have complained about the hissing coming from the air conditioning. I assure you it is working just fine and that the noise is coming from the snakes in the walls. Poisonous snakes are very noisy. Time's up.
Okay, I know. Let me just um, collect your letter then. And what's the result? Yikes! One of you did real bad. Don't worry. Everyone who dies in this hotel turns into a ghost. Keep playing, and you just might steal someone else's life force and win the game. Oh, by the way, the audience is a player now and can win the whole frickin' game. If you're not ready now, you can join the audience whenever. It's like super low press. Let's keep moving. What dish could be found at a Hungarian-Vietnamese fusion restaurant? Time's running out. Who picked this? Which leaves only you. Time for consequences. Bonjour! Welcome back to the killing room. This one's just about me giving you a gift. Help yourself to a totem that represents my family drama. Pick a box and keep what's inside. Ugh, this room smells weird. Oh, it's one of Uncle Clive's old time bombs. You'll have to answer questions a lot faster now to keep from blowing up. Don't think of it as an unfair burden. Think of it as an extremely unfair burden. Let's try another one. When was George Orwell's 1984 first published? Almost out of time. Who picked this? The rest of you, follow me. A pile of money. Take as much money as you want. But take the most money or the least money and you'll be sorry. Enjoy the mind games. <laughs> I'm excited to see what everybody took. Uh-oh, the most greedy and least greedy must be punished. Someone has to take care of that unexploded bomb now that you're dead. There's a wheel on your controller right now, and you have a few seconds to bequeath it to another player. But you have to do it right now. Don't worry. When a player holding one of my family heirlooms dies, they can fill out a will. It says they left their gift to you. How thoughtful. We're here. When one player is left alive, we'll go to the final round. Next question. Where's Machu Picchu? Time's almost up. Who picked this? The rest of you who are still alive, it's time.
Congrats! All of you are entered in my scratch ticket giveaway. Scratch and find three dollar signs to live. If you keep scratching, I'll give you cash for every dollar sign you find. But if you scratch off even one skull, you die. Scratch away! Keep going to win the big box! The contest is almost over! It's no fun for me if you don't scratch more spots! We know what a losing ticket means! Let's keep moving. What is a calorie? And why can't I stop consuming them? No, just go ahead and answer that first question. Almost out of time. Who picked this? That's annoying. Let's try another one. I feel dumb for asking this, but... What is hummus? show you something. It's the mind meld. Type in an answer that fits this category. Everyone else will answer too. And if anyone matches you, you die. Write your answers now. Now, let's see if there are any matches. So predictable, so fatal. I know you have bigger concerns right now, but you only have a few seconds to fill out that wheel on your controller. Just an FYI. Another wheel has been discovered, and now the item goes to... you! Let's keep moving. What's the title of Langston Hughes' famous poem that begins, What Happens to a Dream Deferred? Almost out of time! Who picked... this? Time for consequences! Time to get out the dice! It's real simple! The player who rolls the highest will die. But we've got some help to make this more interesting. You have an extra die that you can give to whoever you want to make their odds worse. Oh yeah, your odds are astronomically bad now. Roll them! The player with the highest total dies. 
Oh, wow. What a big surprise. You're dead now, so take a quick second to fill out your will. Back off, you greedy jackals. Yes, there was a will. Let's try another one. What does enervated mean? Time's almost up. Who picked this? Only a ghost got it wrong. I'll have to kill my writers. Ah, crap. It's checkout time and too many of you are still alive. Let's fix that. You've been very resilient, but only one of you can survive this game. I hope you can hold your breath. Only one of these keys will open the lock to your tank. Pick the... Find the right key or die. Was the what a way to go. Congrats on making it here alive. But can you escape? I'm going to give you a category. Has more than six legs. Tap each answer that fits the category and then press it. Let's see the right answers. You move forward one space for each correct answer. You're on your way to escaping. Oh wait, did you think it was going to be just you? Aww, that's cute. If a ghost catches you, they'll steal your life force. Then they can try to escape and win the game. Here's everyone's next question. And they get a third chance to help them catch up to you. Time is almost up. Next question. Roman numerals. I'm going too easy on you. Hogwarts teachers. Don't look back because there's a ghost right there. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. It's only darkness. Agatha Christie Mysteries. Time is almost up. Stole some yummy life force. You are but shadows now. Necktie knots. Four stolen life force. Songs from Grace 2. Ah! 
Lunchables. Time is almost up. Darkness approaches. One last trap. You need a perfect answer for your final escape. And that includes the third answer choice now, too. You have to get all the right answers to escape. Hey, knock knock, I'm Officer Trevor. I've been sent to help with that bomb. I'm actually one day away from retirement, so fingers crossed. Let's just see if there's anything on defusing bombs in this dusty old officer's guidebook. It says cut the wire that Pablo Picasso would have cut between 1901 and 1904. I hope that means something to you. Anyway, seems like you had quite...
I hope I don't die before I wait. 